Well, thank you so much to our panelists for that very interesting conversation about the importance of taking inclusive climate action. And this is something that affects us all that live in the city, from green jobs to growth to living a happier and healthier life. So now we go to our next topic. And our next speaker is focused on one of the biggest challenges of our time, and is how to sustainably achieve global food security in a rapidly growing world. Dr. Gong Hill Stordalen is the founder and president of the EAT Foundation, which links climate, health, and sustainability issues to transform global food system. Together with her husband, Peter A. Stordalen, Gong Hill established the Stordalen Foundation in 2011, which supports organizations working on health, development, animal welfare, and environmental protection. Among many other accomplishments, Dr. Gunghill is a published scientist and a young global leader for the World Economic Forum. In 2014, the WWF in Sweden named her the Environmental Hero of the Year, and she's nothing less than that. So please join me in welcoming Gunghill Stordalen to the stage. We're going to give her a minute. She's coming? Yes. <laughs> It's fantastic to be here among so many women or sisters and even some brothers for climate. Looking at you, I'm really, I'm more confident than ever before that our movement really is unstoppable. So my only question is, are we moving fast enough? So let, let me start with a little story on how I got into this myself. I'm a medical doctor by profession, but I've always been an environmentalist by heart. So I grew up in the Norwegian countryside and my dad used to take me hiking in Norway's beautiful mountains and, and woods. But I will never forget the first time my dad showed me a virtual three graveyard. Dead trees with like the bare stems. And to me those dead trees looked like skeletons. I remember I, I felt so scared and I felt so powerless. So ever since then, I've been supported, supporting and working with different NGOs and on the environment and climate issues. And in the first few years, I spent a lot of time to be very frustrated about how difficult it was to get people to be excited about the climate and environmental issues and how little willingness it seems to be around doing something. But in 2009, in the midst of the big depression after the failing uh, COP meeting in, in Copenhagen, something changed. That year, it was published a series of papers in the medical journal, uh, The Lancet, stating climate change as the biggest threat to human health in our century. Suddenly, climate change wasn't just about polar bears. It was all about us. And this is something that obviously is not new. Throughout history, health has been a key argument to gain traction on environmental issues. It was the main driver behind the Clean Air Act in London in the 50s, and it was a really important part of what got the Montreal Protocol on the ozone layer in place in the late 80s. And it was also a key, or now is a key driver of getting more focus on green transport. So what is better for the planet? 
tends to be better for people and the other way around. And nowhere is the link between us and the environment more obvious than what's right in front of us, literally just on our plates. However, right now, it's not in a good way. Today, food is responsible for almost one third of the annual greenhouse gas emissions. In addition, food production is a main driver of a series of other environmental challenges like deforestation and destruction of marine ecosystems. But food is also our leading health challenge. Globally, and this is crazy, globally, poor diet is now a bigger threat to human health than both alcohol, tobacco and drugs combined. Almost one billion people are still going hungry. At the same time, more than twice as many are now either overweight or obese. And in the wake of the overweight and obesity crisis, we see a range of diet-related diseases like heart disease, diabetes, and cancers. On top of this, there's a lot of other food-related serious issues from food waste, antibiotic resistance, poor animal welfare, and increasing social inequalities, and the list goes on. And each and one of these challenges is alarming. But an even bigger problem is that they are heavily interlinked and they are actually compounding each other. So climate change is affecting food production and crop yields and is driving hunger. And with now another two billion mouths to feed over the next couple of decades, food-related emissions with business as usual is estimated to increase with 80%. So you get it, right? Without getting it right on food, we are not going to achieve our global goals and we are not going to deliver on Paris. However, the good news, because there are lots of good news in this, food might also be just our greatest opportunity to get it right for so much. Because nowhere is the connections more apparent and the synergies more numerous than at our plates. So first, food connects human health to the health of the planet. And it comes with multiple co-benefits, or just food with benefits, as I call it. But studies show that now a transformation to healthy diets from sustainable production systems can switch food from being a main driver of all these global challenges to becoming a key solution to tackle and even prevent them. So it was an Oxford study from a couple of years ago that estimated that if the world was shifting towards a plant-based healthy diet, we could save millions of lives and we could save trillions of dollars and not at least, we could cut food-related emissions with 70%. Secondly, food connects our daily choices to our common future. Changing what we eat is the single most important measure we, as individuals, can do for our health, obviously, but also to reduce our climate footprint. And women are still the key decision makers at home. And this, this means that women are key decision makers at large when it comes to food. I'm not sure if you have seen a lot of people craving power grids. I haven't. And I've been sitting long enough in a doctor's office to also understand how difficult it is from time to time to even get people to care about their own health. But food unites 
and food excites. Even Trump care about food. And then we are talking. So last but not least, food connects people. We are all here because we believe in the power of collaboration, right? Our complex global challenges forces us to reach across disciplines, across sectors and across national and municipal borders. The food system challenges not only affects a wide range of stakeholders, but it brings them together. So my organization, EATS, offers a science-led and inclusive platform for stakeholders to scale up action towards a joint vision through more efficient collaboration and better alignment. And we are working with a wide range of different stakeholders, and C40 is one, a very important one. And I'm very excited to see that many of the cities are actually here in the room today. So through this C40 food system networks, we are working with in a total of 38 of the biggest city around the world on developing urban food action plans that will both improve the health of their citizens as well as cut emissions. A win-win. And together they are piloting projects and they're also exchanging innovative uh, ideas and share best practice. Because we at EAT, the whole philosophy of EAT is really that the key to success is very much like food itself. Magic happens when people or cities gather around a table. So, growing up in Norway with my kind of rural surroundings and watching dead fish in the lakes and pollution and forest decay, I felt so scared. I felt powerless and I felt really alone although I really wanted to do something. But today, I'm really a really hardcore optimist. I feel so much more empowered, and I'm also part of a big, passionate, and moving network. And it's people like you guys, it's people like you that get me out of bed every morning and keep on believing that, yes, it is possible. It is the mayors, it is the business people, it is the game-changing entrepreneurs, it is the chefs and the scientists and the civil society leaders that inevitably will be working together to create the world we want. And food is not just one-third of our emission challenge. Food is really our greatest opportunity to now invite some new, strange, but colorful friends and allies to join our movement, to grow and speed it up, and together continue to improve the health of people and planet. So, just to the final, in Star Wars, which I haven't been watching a lot, but anyway, in Star Wars, they say, may the force be with you. But I say, the power is on your plate. Thank you.